Hey everyone, I'm Mike Greaves and this is Back to Art School. So this is the show where I go back to art school and I take a project and do it how I wish I would have done it back then. In this week's episode, we're going to take a take a painting from an old master like Chardin and then draw a framework over the main objects in there and show how they're all connected together and how that affects composition. So I just went online and found a Chardin painting and printed it out 8.5 by 11, taped it down to my surface and then got some tracing paper. And I'm taking my ruler and tracing over all the main objects, but trying to stick to mostly vertical or horizontal lines or maybe 45 degree angles, you know. Another thing I'm doing is finding like the center of each object, the center of it vertically and the center of it horizontally. These lines are all reinforcing the picture plane. That's the 2D surface on which the painting is painted on. You know, the sides are vertical and the top and bottom are horizontal. I made all these lines on here and then the purpose of this is it's kind of like a crazy numerology thing and when when you're making a painting this is really important to the composition to have these connections. The tangents and the centers of the objects line up with things that reference the picture plane so the first easiest one is the center. If you measure halfway up the painting it's that spot so this is the exact middle of the painting right here and then you measure it this way boom so that lines up with the edge of this pear thing cool and then that in the center of the whole thing lines up with the liquid in this bottle here and then you just kind of go bananas from there. Nothing is randomly placed. It's not like shit doesn't line up with it with other things. And also there's a lot of references to space. This shadow at the bottom of the, the table here is like the same distance that this shadow, this shadow on the top is. Bing, bing. The edge of this bottle is the center of this object I don't know it's like a I think it's like a pie or something the bottom of that pie lines up with this little baby and that edge of this pear goes lines up with the center of this I think it's a some kind of nut or something and then the center of this nut is at the bottom of this pear whoa okay I'm gonna cut myself off there so you get it you just draw lines on top of stuff I think it's a really valuable lesson, and a lot of things clicked for me after I did this. Here's what I came up with. And I like doing that so much, I made a bunch more examples. Here's another Chardin, or however you say it in French. More like Modern Master Yun Uglo. Boop. Another Uglo. This guy's a beast. And this is Mirandi. The second half of this project is to make an abstract painting with limited palette using the stuff you learned in the first half of the project. So to speed up the process a little, I'm just tracing that drawing you made onto my panel. Just a little vine charcoal. And then you just trace it onto the panel. You need that vine charcoal in the back so it transfers. I think this is my new favorite technique is using this Mod Podge stuff to seal in the drawing because it doesn't smudge and mix in with the paint. The limited palette for this painting is going to be white, pink, red, brown, and black. And um, you look at the original painting and then distill it down into five values. So it looks like I'm off to a real confident start here, but I blew it with that color and I had to wipe it off and reevaluate with this painting I was trying to keep it as abstract as I could so each note and shape on the original painting I was letting it stand as one brush stroke which I think is a pretty good exercise because you know you really want to 
scrape that paint off and get in there and get all detailed and stuff, but you gotta change it up. This painting was actually pretty helpful for me. If you remember the last Back to Art School, I was having trouble moving around the painting more frequently, and you can see here that I'm really bopping around. There it is with proper white balance. And there's the ridge. Alright, thanks for watching Back to Art School. Episode 3. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want to see in the future. Got some syllabi coming to me from old classmates. And don't forget to paint your brushes. Mm -hmm.